Them that's got shall get. Them that's not shall lose. So the Bible said and still is news. Oh, mama may have, papa may have, but God bless the child that's got his own, that's got his own. Mm, yes, the strong gets more while the weak ones fade. Empty pockets don't ever make the grade. And mama may have, papa may have, but God bless the child that's got its own, that's got its own. Mm. Hey guys, welcome to Bell's Bargains. My name is Amy. That was, for those of you that don't know, though, that goes way back. Anybody, do you remember who was the original artist on that song? I'll give you a hint. She wrote the song with somebody else too. Anyway, great song, beautiful singer. Um, but why did I sing that song today? Because of what we're doing on Totally Easy Tuesday. All right, before we get into that, if this is your first time here, welcome. I hope you stick around for a little bit. We have a whole bunch of fun on this channel and just consider subscribing. Just con It's free. Just do it. Hit that all button. Smash that all button, my grandson says. And just try a few. I think you'll get addicted and I think you'll really like it here. You've landed on Totally Easy Tuesday. And for those of you who don't know, Totally Easy Tuesday is crafting for the non-crafter because I believe that everybody should be allowed to craft. And the Dollar Tree makes it easy for us because all of their supplies are a dollar, people, a dollar. This whole channel is Dollar Tree and only Dollar Tree, which everything I made today that I'm going to show you, all of it came from the Dollar Tree. Every bit of it, except for my glue gun I used. And I think I used a screwdriver also that didn't come from the Dollar Tree. Although I could have gotten a screwdriver from the Dollar Tree. All right, let's talk about just a few things. Um, today, at the end of this video, we're going to show our subscribers challenge. All right, for those of you that are new, you don't know what goes on here. But I've started something new called the Subscribers Challenge. And we, I throw a challenge out there and you've got, this time you're gonna get a whole month to do the challenge and then send me the photos and explanation of, of your craft via my Facebook page, which is linked down below. And then I do a video and I show what everybody made. It's a whole bunch of fun. It's super interactive. I really love doing this. So after I do the, my crafts on this video, then you're going to see all of the challenge, uh, all of the subscribers crafts that did that with us. Ooh, man, spit that sentence out. Anyway, so it was so much fun. This month was a truck. So now we're going to do another subscribers challenge for the month of August. And guess what? I thought it's August. It's all back to school. Let's just do a, a phrase for our challenge or a, yeah, a couple words. Our phrase is back to school. Now you interpret that however you want and you do a craft based on back to school. It could be anything. I'm not telling you anything. I'm not giving you any ideas. All I'm gonna say is that it has to be all Dollar Tree supplies. Your craft has to be all Dollar Tree supplies. That's the one thing I do on my channel is it's all Dollar Tree and only Dollar Tree. So our theme, our theme for our subscriber challenge is back to school. So I'm not, this is super easy because you don't have to go find some specific thing. Like last month it was the truck and some of you couldn't find the truck. All right, so no finding anything specific. You come up with it all on your own. Use your imagination. Back to school is our theme. And I'll talk about it. Uh, I'll give some more deets in direct, during, bleh, later on in the month. And I'll give you the date that they have to have the pictures in to me. But it's going to be basically at the end of the month. So you have all August to do back to school. All right, let's see. I can't remember now. Somebody told me who said that it was Amy's Army on Life. Was it you, Mickey, from Minnesota? I think it was. Anyway, listen, I'm just going to throw a couple more out there because you guys have had some fun with us. All right, Crafty Savvy ha said, how about Bella's Brigade? Because a brigade, it's like, it's, like the, it's like everybody in YouTube is the Dollar Tree Army, but you guys are my Bella's Brigade. brigade. How about Bella's Bees, which was Nikki, Mickey. <sighs> Blah. But I like Bella's Bees. Mm, there's so many things we could think with that. Um, Bella's Beauties by Sharon, which I also really like Bella's Beauties. And then Kathy suggested Bella's Besties. This is it. We're deciding today. 
So we've got Amy's Armies, Bella's Brigade, Bella's Bees, Bella's Beauties, or Bella's Besties. I kind of like Bella's Besties, I gotta be honest, because you guys are like my besties. I feel like you're just, I say this all the time, it's like you're sitting here in the kitchen with me. Be like, hey besties, how are you? Um, let's have some coffee. I don't have a funny mug today, isn't that odd? Oh. This is a mug I've had forever. Look, there's not even, there's something on that side. I don't know, anyway. Um, okay. Um, na, 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 na. I said, let's name the clothing. Let's talk about clothing. Oh my gosh. Look what I have on you guys. Booyah. It's another Disney shirt. So I made one for my guy, his matches, but look, I changed the collar completely. I did the sleeves. I think it's so adorable. I did nothing to the bottom again. By the way, this makes the girls look really good. This shirt does. So I hope you guys like this. Boom. At the end of the, at the very end of this video, I walk you through how I made this shirt. Don't you love how this collar came out on this? Actually, I've never done that before. It was a new one for me, but I love it. And so I said, all right, I'm doing all these Dollar Tree clothing. Listen, Lisa said Dollar Tree duds and Sharon said Dollar Tree threads. So I don't know, we have to come up with something. Yeah, anyway, don't know, it doesn't matter. All right, let's see, um, but -da -da -da, I talked about new channel, okay. When I get back from Disney, by the way, you guys, I'm gonna do a video of all the crafts that I have available that you can you can pay for the shipping and I will send them to you, okay? So I'm gonna do that when I get back because I know I said that and then the kids were coming and I haven't gotten back to it, but I will get back to it. I've gotta go out in my garage, bring them all in, video them all, and then put it out there. And you guys, if you want any of the crafts, you just have to pay for shipping. I have to figure out how to do that. I think I'd take it to the UPS store and They'll tell me how much, I think. I don't know. And then I don't even know how I collect the money from you. All right. And Rita, you know, you wanted apples. So I think this back to school is going to be great for you. But also, I am doing an apple challenge. Oh, I forgot to say what day it was. Well, it's while I'm gone. So just look for, I'll, I'll say it in a video. Next video, I'll say what date it is. But I'm doing an apple challenge. So I got stuff to make um, an apple challenge with. And super excited about that. So Rita, keep an eye out for that because that's really going to satisfy your apple thing. Trust me. And also back to school, I feel like it's going to be so much apples. All right. When I get back, I'm also going to do my calendar week and give away some of those calendars. What else we got? Weekly giveaway. Did I even talk about it? Wait, what? Did I talk about it? Guess what? Today is Tuesday. And do you know what that means? It means I announce who won this week. All right, you guys. Let's see. I got to get pull it up on my iPad here. Um, our lucky winner this week was, bum, ba -da -dum. it is Teresa Worley. Yay, Teresa. You just have to go on my Facebook Messenger and send me your address, and I'm going to send you a $20 Dollar Tree gift card. For those of you that are new here and don't know, we do a weekly giveaway here. All you have to do is be a subscriber. Number one, you have to be a subscribe, 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 subscribe. That's not even subliminal, is it? I should really work on that. And then you just hit that subscribe button, hit the all notification button as well. But then all you have to do is watch Tuesday and Thursdays. Now those two days of the week are my like craft days. Totally easy Tuesday, which is usually easy, easier crafts. And then theme Thursday, which I have a theme to, and some of those can be a little more difficult. And all you have to do is give a thumbs up to both videos and make a comment. And then you're entered into the drawing. Could it be any easier? This week, Teresa won a $20 gift card which I will mail off in the mail to her today. Um, and that's it. And that's part of our weekly challenge. Let's see. I already said that the challenge. Okay. Oh, I have to tell Pat. Pat, today was kid day. Did I, have I said that yet? The theme today is God bless the child that's got its own. Got its own, which all came from doing this craft. Hold on. It's stuck. Which all came from doing this craft which was a gift bag. All right, but first, I want to tell you, Pat, I was doing the Cinderella carriage. I broke it. So I have to find another one now and do it. And it was going to come out so cute too, and I broke it. So it, it happens. Actually, it's so funny because the other day I thought, guy, I really haven't broken anything while I'm doing my crafts lately. And bam, you know, it's like I put it out there in the universe. All right, so let's see. Um, and, she, and Sheila, I made something today that you're going to be happy with. Okay, ready? Let's get into it. So the theme today was children. And so I did a bunch of things that would be good for like a children's room or for a child. And the first one was this. This was my motivation. This is that children are a gift from the Lord. Psalms 127.3. This was so easy. 
It was a gift bag. Do you guys remember when I hauled this and I said I'm going to make it? One of the things I did, I haven't done this before, I don't think. This is a canvas. Now, I'm going to tell you the reason I like a canvas is because you can wrap around and complete your edges, all right? The bag paper is pretty thick, so it holds up on its own. It doesn't have to go behind the glass. Anyway, I just, very little embellishments on this. I really thought that the lavender went well with the green and adding those hearts on it. Um and just some greenery. I just think this came out really cute. I have droopy flowers over here, but that's okay. It's just super cute. I love this. And how sweet would this be? Like in a nursery even. All right. So that was item numero uno. I'm going to have to move these out of the way. I don't even know how. Then the second one was this little mermaid coloring book. You guys, you know, I love my coloring books. When I hauled this, I said I was going to do this. That is, is that so cute? Look, I put colors on the seashells. Um, it's getting a glare. Sorry about that. This was a coloring book. My daughter loves Little Mermaid. I'm probably going to give this to her. Um, and it's just, it's, I don't know. I th thought the print was so beautiful in the coloring book. What it was, you'll see in the video, it was a princess and it was Little Mermaid. And it was a, like, learn how to write, like, the Little Mermaid thing. You know, one of those books where they walk you through how to write a certain font. Um, and that was in there. And I was like, oh, I love that print. So, okay, where to next? Hey, Sheila, you wanted to see this when I hauled it. I said I was going to make this. Here it is, boys and girls. It's a t-shirt tote. Let me show you how a tote works. What can I throw in there? Uh-oh. I just knocked something off. Of my... Oh, dear. Can't have that. Sorry. Okay, this is a tote. So you put things in a tote, right? I mean, so look. Bump, bump. Did you see that? I put something in there. This was so easy. So it's just perfect. Now, what I did, you guys... You'll see in the video how I made it. This is a little Cinderella hanging thing because I'm going to give it to my granddaughter to use at Disney. I made this. At first, I thought this was going to be a decoration like on the bag, but really, it's a matching brace. Hold on. I got to put it on. It's a, match, a matching bracelet to the tote that I made using the parts. I just put it on backwards. Using... um the stuff that I cut off the t-shirt to make the, this is not working well. Hold it, there we go. I made the bracelet using parts that I cut off the t-shirt to make the tote. And see, look, it's a cute little matching bracelet to the tote. I used one of the iron-ons that I hauled, oh, a few months ago when they had the iron-ons all out. I think it's so cute. No, so, is that not adorable, this little tote? So I'm taking this to Disney to give to my granddaughter. You guys, that was, it was so easy to make. If you have little girls or even for yourself, it's a great way to make grocery totes too because you can wash them. And so when you go to the grocery store and you're putting them in those plastic bags, it's a little harder to get them cleaned up. Anyway, this is the tote. I absolutely love that. I'm super excited to give that to her. Okay, and then this, I saw something similar to this and I was like, ooh, I want to make one. Now, I have to, a little backstory here. When my kids were little, I have three girls and a boy. But the girls, like I was always braiding their hair. And speaking of hair, before anybody says anything, I have naturally curly hair. This is pretty much it naturally, FYI, before you guys, you know, go off on, I don't know. You always tell me, I like your hair today, or I don't like your hair today. So this is my natural hair. This is, it's naturally curly. I just diffuse it with a blow dryer, which is why I don't wear it like this a whole bunch because I don't really like to blow dry my hair. That was too much information. Who cares? All right. But when my girls were little, I always, I was always braiding their hair and I would make, imagine this, I made all their hair bows. It was so much cheaper. That was back in the day. I did a lot of catering. And when you do catering, there was always leftover like decorations and there would be ribbon and stuff that people were just throwing away. So I recycled, recycling, I recycled the ribbon all the time. I took it home and I would make these amazing hair bows for my girls and do these amazing braids in their hair. So I made, way back in the day, I made a hair, bo a, hair, a hair bow holder for their rooms. And I just took like a piece of wood and I wrote their names and I had ribbons hanging down. So this is different than that. But I've got to tell you, I used those for years with the girls. And it was so convenient because basically the hair, decoration, the hair bows became a decoration in their room, if all that makes sense. So this is a great idea. Grandmas, if you have little girls that wear hair bows... I didn't get a hair bow. I need to show you. Well, I forgot to bring a hair bow. Ugh. Okay. 
Are you ready? This is so cute. And this is all Dollar Tree supplies. Is that the cutest thing? By the way, it hangs up. It, it hangs up. Um, it's a pair of the fairy wings. This is a canvas that I made the bodice out of. This is in their dress up stuff. And I used two skirts because I wanted the blue to pop through on the bottom to match the, the um, wings. But I cut part of the skirt off, you'll see in the video, to cover the bodice. Now, look at this. This is, I loved having a hair bow holder for my girls when they were little. So, <coughs> so sorry guys. These ribbons hanging down are what you use to put your hair bows on. I don't have any little girl ones. I don't have any little girls here right now, so. See? But then you can also literally take other parts of this and clip things on too. How adorable. If you guys absolutely love this right now, give me um, fairy wings or a ballerina. This is so cute. And then the cost on this was a dollar for the wings, one dollar for the white skirt, a dollar for the blue skirt, so it's one, two, three and a dollar for the um, canvas that I used. So it's one, two, three, four, and then we'll say a dollar's worth of ribbon, five dollars. This is so cute. Wouldn't any girl love to hang this in her room? And then they can just go and pick out whatever clip they want. Just saying. They have bumblebee wings there. You could do a bumblebee one. They have, anyway, there's all kinds of ways. And you don't have to put wings on it too. You could just do it like this, like a little girl's dress. All right, I hope you guys love that. I love that. I think I know the little girl I'm gonna give it to. I'm gonna ask her mom if she would like it before I give it to her. I don't like giving stuff to little girls and they don't like it, if I've made it especially. All right, then I hauled these a while ago and they've been sitting there and I finally got to it because that's how it goes. Because I had like this things for kids. Look at that, do you see all the mess behind me in the mirror? That's my crafting stuff right there. Okay, so is this not the sweetest? So it's three of the cloud, they, these, right, with the hangers on them. And then I used galvanized clouds. I used one of the mirror wall arts. And these are the stars from the children's wood puzzle. This is so cute. It looks so much like a nursery. I wish my, I don't know, maybe my daughter would want it. But she, I don't think she uses a lot of color. Anyway, um, it's so pretty. I, sorry about the glare. Can you guys see better if I come up like this? How cute is that, right? So cute. Love that. And the cost on that was one, two, three, four, five, six, about seven dollars. Seven bucks. But if you saw that on clearance, you'd buy it for seven dollars, right? Where am I now? Mm, this was one. I think this is, I'm just a colorful person. So these things are usually my favorite, the ones that are really vibrant and full of color. Because, yeah, because for some reason I'm just very colorful. I don't know. We'll see why I just knocked it. It's, there we go. Sitting on something. Hold on, coffee. Okay, now I love to do art, obviously. And I usually have like an art station. I don't have one here yet. Like, well, I'll have an easel up and then whatever. Anyway, not saying I paint a lot, but it was always, it's always on the ready. So this is so cute. I hauled the really colorful pencil holders a couple weeks ago. And I was like, I don't even know what I'm gonna do with them yet, but I just love them because they were so vibrant and cool. All right, so this is what I did. See that it says art supplies. Ba -ba -da -da. How cute, you guys. Come on, you gotta admit, that's so cute. You'll see in the video. Now this one, I gotta say, it's easy, but it's hard because I had to like sort of um, use some muscle and enlarge some of the holes so that I could um, zip tie these together because I wanted the stair step effect, right? And I love this. I just paint splattered one of the little um, chalkboard ones and used chalkboard marker things to write art supplies. I love this. And I even, the kickstand that was on this, I used to help stabilize this. You guys, it's so cute. So I gotta give this to somebody, I don't know who. Um, maybe one of my grandkids. Oh, I probably will. Actually, I know who I'm going to send it to. Anyway, so cute. So adorable. Hope you love it. I do. I just, that was, and that's four, $5. Because I've got four of these invested in it and this. I mean, obviously, I'm not counting the cost of the paints and whatnot. So, don't you? I love that. 
I like love that. Okay, now I'm gonna show you my challenge truck. So thank you everybody. Gosh, I don't even know how many at this point. I just, I downloaded them all, but I don't remember what the count was, but it was more than last time. And so it's super exciting to see this subscriber challenge grow. I want it to grow so big that it's its own video, which would be phenomenal. All right, but this is because today I was doing kids. I was like, all right, well, I'm doing kids, so I'm gonna make this truck. So, kids week, how to do something kid. And um, I hope you guys like it. It's my Toy Story 4 truck. Look at all the characters. Buzz is hanging off the end trying to catch RC. We got Bo Peep hanging on for dear life. Woody's driving. The little bunnies from Toy Story 4. Then Jesse and the army guy. Oh, so I bought all of the little, it was the mini Toy Story series, Toy Story 4 series, which I bought. Um, I don't know. I think I bought it after Easter because I noticed they were in Easter eggs and it was like leftover thing or you'll anyway. Um, but then they had all these little surprise ones. So I bought all the surprise ones too. And so this is what I came up with. Oh my gosh, you guys, I hope you love it. Totally inspired by, I was doing the kids crafts today. Um, I did little buttons for the, for the lights and the, and the rear lights buzz is falling off. I got a glue buzz back on. Anyway, so hope you guys love this. I had so much fun doing it. It's so cute. I, I don't know who I'm gonna give it to. I'm assuming one of the grandkids will call and claim it, which is fine. They totally can. Um, but until then, I'll probably just put it in my, um, sort of my middle room, which is not really a craft room. I need a craft room. If I had a craft room, I would totally put this in there. Anyway, hope you guys like it. It was so much fun to make. Um, I just, yeah, great challenge. I loved this challenge. I had a glue buzz back on now. I held on to him too tight and he fell off. All right, so you guys, that's it. Don't forget, at the end of this video, all of the truck challenges are there. And then um, uh, at the very end is how I made this t-shirt that I'm wearing. I'm gluing buzz back on, like literally, while I'm talking to you. It's ADD, I just, yeah. Um, and also, I said all the challenges, right? Which thank you to every one of you that did the challenge. Thank you so much. Next month's challenge, back to school. Do whatever you want. Okay, you guys, that's it. I'm going to be making a whole bunch more videos this week, trying to double up so that you have something while I'm at Disney. Don't forget, a 1,000 subscribers, you get to see who? Mm, uh-huh. And I'm not going to be able to do a live at Disney because I'd have to take my computer, but we will do a video at Disney, and I'll upload it, hopefully, while we're there, depending upon the internet connection at Disney. All right, so that's it. Have a great day, great week, a great life. And as always, from your singing crafty crafter, happy hunting at your local Dollar Tree. Enjoy the video, and don't forget to thumbs up and like this video. It really does help, and make a comment. Okay, you guys, here's the rest of it. Enjoy.
one is this gift bag that says children are a gift from God. And I'm going to make a decor piece out of it using a canvas, one of the 11 by 14 inch canvas, a couple of floral picks, some ribbon, and I'm thinking maybe some baker's twine and possibly some of the laser cut hearts. The, the, this is one I've already split in two because I can get multiple use out of it. I'll probably split this one in two as well. Um, and I think I'm going to spray adhesive it on because this is fairly thick. And I may even use the ribbon from the handle of the bag. I might use that in it too. We don't know. So let's, let's do this project. So I just take the bag apart and cut out the sign that says children are a gift from the Lord. Not God, like I said before. <laughs> um, and because I'm using a canvas, I'm not going to cut it down to exact size because I want to be able to adhesive it over the edges so that it's cohesive. So putting my spray glue on, centering that on the back, and then just pulling those edges in. I'm slightly off camera, sorry guys. And I just did the two sides first, the long sides, and then I cut so that I could fold those in. And it's just cutting the one and then doing an angle cut on the other side to get that in there. And this is a cotton twine. I decided that the purple would look really good with the green. So I'm using a pick here. I'm just gonna put a little floral at the bottom of this. And not too much, but just enough. Really love the combo, though, of this slight little bit of lavenderish color in there. So I tied those on and then started just gluing the little picks of the little lavenderish colored florals from that pick. And then I took a lavender ribbon and made a little bow, tied that on with the cotton twine, so it's all tied on, little corner cut. I did hot glue down the bunch so it would stay right on it. And I'm just reviewing some of those flowers. I <laughs> didn't want to stay on. I'm sure I got them on. Now I'm going to add the hearts. I left the cotton twine a little bit longer so I could like just add the hearts hanging off of the floral part of it. So just do one and then the next one I hang it just a little bit lower. And these again I split them in water. I put them in water so they get two out of them. And then took one and put it on the O of Lord. So I tried to hot glue it at first. It really didn't work because it's sort of a plasticky paper so I used some Mod Podge just painted the back of the heart and put it on there. And then I took that same lavender ribbon and put a hanger on it. I'm so precise on my measuring here. I used the scissors to measure my distance from the ends. Well, it works. And that's it. This project is done. I think it came out really beautiful. And this was from a gift bag. So how cool is that? I thought about putting some florals on top. In the end, I decided not to. Right, for this one I'm starting with um, this Disney princess hand lettering but it's Little Mermaid and they are there's just some really pretty pages in here and then you can write things and make a sign and whatnot so I'm actually doing this particular print right here I have this had something else in it which I saved it and so I'm gonna frame and decorate up a Little Mermaid print. I have some seashells over here and an array of my metallic markers, my glass markers and stuff so that I can, you know, do some coloring on the seashells. And then put them on the outside to match 
in here. Okay. So I decided not to rip the page out because I'm not going to use the whole page and I just scored with the scissors there and cut it out to fit the frame and making sure that I have Ariel in the right position on that frame. I'm going to trim it a little bit more on the bottom just to get it to fit in there and put it all back together and now it looks so cute just like that but of course we're going to add some seashells so I just started coloring up some of the seashells with my markers and stuff just to try and pull some of those colors in that were in the print. I did a couple of them that I didn't use because I didn't like the way they came out. In the end, um, what I really liked was using the chalk markers. It gave a really vibrant color and then just played with getting some of them on there looking nice around framing that, that print. So I was going to put some just on the bottom corner, and I ended up, I hit my camera for you, ended up uh, putting some up in the upper corner as well. So those are the chalk markers, and they worked really great for putting some vibrant colors on there and matching the colors that were in the print. And just deciding what was going to look best. I think this is really cute. And you guys, this is a coloring book. You know how much I love to use the prints from a coloring book. Because it's just not what you think of as something that you're going to make a craft with. But it was such a pretty print of Ariel. And in that sort of metallic frame, it looks really, really pretty. So just put some seashells down there on the bottom. And then just put a couple more up on the top corner. In the end, I think it looks really cute. Sweet decoration for a little girl's room or a little mermaid bathroom or something like that. Super easy and really cute. like hair tie holder for a little girl. I'm gonna use this to make sort of the bodice and then I'm gonna put the skirt on it and cover it and put some ribbons to hold um, hair ties. I started by pulling the elastic from the back side of the wings to the front so that I can attach the bodice with it. Now I'm just tracing to make it look like it's um, like the top, top part of um, a ballerina outfit. So this is the neck I'm trying to cut out right here. By the way, if you're gonna do this, score from the front. I was scoring from the back, but the front is the better place to score. And I was just, took a little bit of elbow grease, but eventually I got it to where I wanted. And I wasn't too concerned with the edges being rough because I'm gonna cover this. So I just had to get the basic shape. And now, it's like the arms, right? I'm just scoring, 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 and ripping it out. But then I keep this piece because I'm going to take this piece to go to the other side and trace the other side so that they were the same size. On this one, I did score from the front, which worked a little bit easier, and just cleaned it up there with some arms. Now... I'm going to attach the wings. So as I attach the wings, I pull the, maybe not yet, <laughs> I guess I'm getting the skirts off first. Just taking the tags off the skirts. And this one is going to be on top, but I cut a section out because it was bigger than the other one. And I wanted that blue to show underneath that white. So I'm just gluing the skirt onto my bodice that I've made there what I cut out, I'm doing on there. And then I'm just going to glue this around to cover up the bodice. So that's the piece of the skirt that I cut out. Slightly off camera today, sorry guys. 
and I'm just gluing and pushing it down and just with pressure pull to get it to take the shape of the bodice. And it worked. I mean, it worked really well. In the end, you'll see. It looks like it's a little ballerina outfit with wings. So now I just took the elastic that was on the back and I put that down the center of the canvas and then just glued the wings to the back side of that canvas. The blue skirt I glued lower than the white skirt so that the blue would pop out the bottom. And now I'm just going to glue that. There's a little bit extra. So I'm just going to glue this around the bodice part. So then there's our waist. And then I took the elastic from the wings and pulled it up to the corners there. And that becomes what is the form for my bodice part. And then just took, this is a mermaid ribbon. This is really nice ribbon from the Dollar Tree. And just covered up that elastic. And now we have a pretty design on the bodice. And now I'm going to add a ribbon to the waist. So I just tied it around there. Not tight, I glued it. Now I'm going to put strings on the skirt part, and that's what you actually hang the barrettes on. So I did the mermaid um, scale ribbon and a white ribbon, and you can see I put five pieces of ribbon on there. And they hang down, and you can put barrettes onto it. And then I took the little bit that I had left of the mermaid ribbon, and I made a bow and put that in the center, and voila, we are done, and it's so, so cute. All right, so I'm going to make a kid's like coat rack thing and I'm using all these elements. I have the three clouds, I have these um, these metal clouds and some stars and a moon. And then these are actually out of one of the wooden puzzles and some other little galvanized clouds. And we're just gonna make a really cute kids room hanging rack thing. Um, yeah. Oh, I'm going to use my super glue epoxy, but I'll also use um, hot glue to attach it quickly. So I'm going to mix up this epoxy, which is like a two-part epoxy. You squeeze it out and then you mix it up. You know, always use a toothpick. I don't know why. It's easy. And then just start applying that on there. And then I'm going to use hot glue for the immediate seal. And I'm not putting these all at the same level, right? I just used a pencil just to sort of mark so I knew where put my glue on that one and there I have the base now I'm going to add my metal clouds to the background again I used a pencil just so I would know I did the same thing I put the glue on the hot glue to hold it quickly and then add another one this looks so cute already and we haven't even added all the other elements so I just went to the back side so I could see, put some more glue on, and the hot glue, and there we go. Now I'm going to start adding in the decorative parts to it. <clears throat> this is a mirror wall decor piece. They're really cool. I covered up the holes that were left on the galvanized with them. I had some smaller galvanized, I thought about using, I didn't use those. And then these are the stars from the puzzles. And they look so, so cute. This is so perfect for a nursery. So these mirror things have pieces that come off of them, FYI. So it makes it more shiny. Hope you like it. Okay, so I have a t-shirt here. A very pretty blue t-shirt. I have one of the Iron On Art, um, which is a heart and a pair of scissors. So we're gonna make a tote and a no-sew tote and we're gonna put an applique on it. Um, iron that on there. 
So the first thing you do on these is you have to cut your handles. And the way you cut your handles is fold the t-shirt in half and then cut the center out. So see how deep I go there? Because that's what your handles are. Then cut the sleeves off. And then just you want to go outside of the seam so that you don't cut into the double part where the seam would be. So I'm going to add the applique. Oh, no, not yet. First, I'm going to cut off the bottom. And we have to cut that off because we're going to do cutting so that we can tie it all together. Now, I put a mark on my scissors so I know how deep to cut for each one. And I'm cutting pretty close because I'm going to knot these, and that's what's going to hold the bottom in. And you have to be really careful when you knot to make sure you don't miss any of the little pieces. So I do all that, and I just start knotting, and I'm double knotting. And you double knot pretty tight because you want the bottom to hold. And you have so many knots and so many, um, what are they called, tassels, like tail things. And this is where you have to be really careful. Make sure you pull each of those pieces in and don't skip one. Because if you skip one, you're going to come off. You're going to be off at the end. <laughs> um, and I just keep double knotting, double knotting, get to the end. And we are good. And then I went back and looked to make sure they were all tight. Now I'm going to add the applique. So this, you just put it on there. And then you get an iron. And you iron for like 30 seconds or so on the one side. And then you go to the inside and you iron the inside of it. And then you start to peel it off. So when I went to peel it off, a couple of the little pieces hadn't yet adhered for some reason. So I, I just went back over it. This is one of the sleeves. And so I cut the sleeve and I get three equal pieces out of this. So I'm going to one, two, three. I'm going to knot that all together and I'm going to make a braid. This is my little Cinderella I'm going to add to it. So at first I thought I would tie that on there. So I braided it, braided it all the way down. And at first I did, I like knotted it, not all together. I like did knots with each one of the pieces. In the end I undid that and just did one large knot like the beginning of it. So I tried to hang this on the tote. Um, it really didn't work. You'll see in a minute. This is where I started putting it off and some of the things didn't quite come off. So then I left those on. I just cut away the part that did work and then did some re-ironing. I mean, it's just, it's, if there was one missing, nobody's going to know. <laughs> so I re-iron. So now I go to add this little braid with the Cinderella. But it doesn't quite hang right. So in the end, I took the braid thing off of Cinderella and did a same knot that I did on the beginning of the braid. Right here, I'm undoing those knots, and I do one big knot, and I trim off the tassels at the end. And I'm going to do the rest of this. There's still one little piece that just didn't want to stick. Eventually, I got it to. Now, I'm taking, I'm making two more strips because on the shoulders, I want to cinch those. They're actually the tote handles. So I just cinched them with a piece and tied it, looped it around and tied it. So you have a nice cinch on the top of your handles. And I took Cinderella off, I put her on by herself, and then that piece becomes a bracelet that's attached to it. So when you use your tape, you can put a bracelet on. And move Cinderella over to the other side so she hung right. And that's it. Came out so cute. going to be an art supply center. So I have these four really colorful pencil holders, which I love, a little chalkboard sign, and matching colors to the pencil holders in acrylic paints. And what I'm going to do is splatter paint all over this in these colors, and then we're going to zip tie these up in a little stair step way with the sign in front of it that says art supplies. Really cute for a kid's room. I put my chalkboard into a tub so I wouldn't splatter paint everywhere. And then I just took the colors that matched the pencil holders and used a brush and just flicked it all over it. Didn't matter if it got on the chalkboard part. That was going to be fine. Um, and it just looked really cool and really colorful. So after I did all that, I put that off to dry and I started zip tying. Now, the zip ties didn't quite fit through the holes in this. And so I tried to just pull it through, but it broke the zip tie. 
So I then, after I did a whole one and it broke, I'm like, okay, that doesn't work. So I got my little trusty little screwdriver and just basically did a little elbow grease and pushed those holes in a little bit bigger and then I could get a zip tie, zip tie through. So this took a little finagling. It was a little time consuming, but it worked really well. They aren't going anywhere and you have to get these lined up properly. Um, but once you get it through and you zip tie it, it's all good. And I was not putting these all at the same level. You notice I'm stair stepping them up. So one's going to be on the bottom and then it like Christmas trees up, I guess, is it, or stair steps up. So you can see it here. So I'm just making my holes and enlarging them so I can get the zip tie through. Again, a little bit of elbow grease here, but it did work really, really well. And trying to line up the holes was the probably the biggest part. I grabbed the rag so I was really wearing on my hand doing this. <laughs> but a little bit of just trying to be really careful lining up your holes the right way. So in the end I get them all on and push through and get those zip ties through. I think this is one the one where I zip tied the wrong holes to each other so I didn't do it and redo it. Um, but I love the colors of these. I think it's super bright. I think making a little art center out of this is just super adorable for a kid's room. And it came out exactly how I envisioned it. I love it when that happens. And again, the hardest part of this was doing the zip ties. Just took it a little bit. But they came out so cute. So then I get them all zip tied together here. And I add on the last one. I did, as we went up, I zip tied twice. So I did a zip tie through each one of the ones that they were touching. Because um, I didn't want it to to come apart at all. So this is the last one that I'm zip tying on. I'm just working hard to get those, just to make it a larger hole to get the zip tie to it. And then I, next I took, after I got this all done, I took the leg off of the, the chalkboard sign had a little leg on it. And I ended up using that as a Right there, I took it off and I used it to balance on the the pencil holders so it had another leg. And now I'm just going to write art supplies. Started to try and do it in chalk first, and I was like, no, I don't want to do script. I want to print because it's you know like for kids. So I got a visual. I'm like, okay, I get rid of all that. Then I got my chalk markers and just wrote art supplies. These are so vibrant. I really, really love these. And I wasn't concerned about my writing because it's I like that it's just sort of sloppy and looks like somebody just wrote it on there. The purple isn't as vibrant, but it works. It just looks really cool. And then after I do this, attach the leg and then put this on the front of it and oh my gosh this is so cute I kind of want to like put it up and use it for my own crafting stuff but how cute would this be to give as a birthday present and put art supplies in it and this is the whole cost for this was five dollars well unless you added supplies into it but it's so adorable and so vibrant and I wasn't being super careful about my writing here because I thought that was actually added to the character of it, just to have it be, you know, just, just handwritten like that. So art supplies, figure out where I'm going to put it. And I did just glue this on. I didn't, didn't really need anything else but to be glued on. And I add the leg, and I made sure that the leg was coming to the same place on so it would hit the floor or the table at the same spot. And there was a screw in that leg, and I just used that screw to screw it into the pencil holder. It worked fabulous. And there, just making sure that I'm at the same level as that will be when it goes on. So I just screwed that on. And this is just a little added support. It's not like you're going to put a ton of weight into these. 
and then attached my sign that said art supplies. So see how it had that little part that was left over from where the leg was? I used that as my base for gluing it on and it worked fabulous. Also on the bottom there. And then we're like done and it came out so cute with pencil holders. But these are amazing colors. I love, I love these. Anyway, I hope you guys really like this. I think it came out adorable. So I'm going to do my challenge truck. And I have Toy Story. I also have my glue from my last challenge. Well, I might need that, actually. Um, and I have all these Toy Story surprise things, too. So, you know, in Toy Story, they just sort of take over the takeover things. So I just thought I'd have them taking over a truck. I have some of my little wooden domino pieces to probably build back here. I also have some decorative... Um, popsicle sticks to build like the the you know part on the back and then regular popsicle sticks in case I need them so this is since today was kids I thought well my challenge will be kids too kids themed <laughs> this was so much fun to do I'd collect I had hauled these Toy Story little minis a while back and I had them in my gift stash and it just came to me I was like oh I'm gonna make a Toy Story truck so I opened up all my surprise things, which when I hauled them, I had looked at the codes, so I got every one of them was different, except I did end up with two Woodies because Woody was in the original pack of um, the minis. So now I'm just going to build up the truck. And these domino pieces are great because they're little wood pieces. I just cut them down and built the truck up on the front and in the back and then with popsicle sticks. So this took a little bit of finagling, <laughs> but eventually I got it there. I put the base in the back and then just started building the front of the truck and just measuring with <laughs> with the pencil. This is so funny though. I literally put a windshield on but I closed it all up. Later on I had to take that off and open up the windshield. And you'll notice I sort of overhung that roof piece because I thought that looked really cool. Like it had a little visor on the truck. And um, I was trying to fill in the spots with glue so when I painted it it would be solid. And then I go to the, just adding more wood onto it. And we have to go to popsicle sticks. And here's my paint. But then I start painting it and I realize, oh, I didn't finish the front. I love this blue. It's like my favorite acrylic blue color from Crafters Corner or whatever it's called. And then I take the popsicle sticks and start building up the front of it. Because I totally forgot that before I started painting it. Um, and just filling it in. Measuring, filling it in, gluing it on there, just to make it a complete truck. And you notice on the bumper, I stick the bumpers off a little bit wider than the actual truck is, because that's for the bumper to do. And then, then I think I go to the back and build up the back with my bumper a little bit wider there. Add a few pieces to fill in here. In the end, it looks so cute. I'm very happy with this little project here. Don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I'd probably give it to somebody. Although I was thinking it would be really cute, I could probably make it a Christmas decoration. So then I just start painting the whole thing and getting that blue on there. Now, this, I could believe it, I basically did like two coats of it. And I did paint the inside of it too, just so wherever you saw it from, you would see blue. And then after I did this, I started playing with like the things that I was going to add on to it, like wheels and characters and so on and so forth. This is, I love this book. Really fun project. A little tedious, but fun. So then after I get it all painted, 
I start messing with what I'm going to put on the wheels. So I got out my Dollar Tree buttons and you don't end up with four buttons that match very often, by the way. So you'll see when I put the buttons on, I ended up using two different sizes. So this is the packaging from the mystery ones, and I just cut out Toy Story so I could put it on each one of the doors. Just use a little Mod Podge. Then I decided to cut in the back, and so I used my already colored paint sticks and built up my back railing on the truck using the red and the yellow because, of course, that matches the logo for Toy Story 4. Well, any Toy Story, actually. And just built that up in the back, put two reds and then two yellows, which I cut down to size. And the rounding part of the popsicle sticks is what always shows. So I have round part of the popsicle stick on the top and the round part of the popsicle stick on the cross braces is also to the back. And then I measured one and then cut the rest of them. It's pretty easy. And then just glued those on both sides. Clean up a little bit. I'm trying to clean up. <laughs> then I'm put two little buttons on as headlights, two little red buttons on as the back lights, and then start coloring in the wheels because I know I'm going to add buttons, but I need it to be dark because some of the buttons aren't going to be as big as the wheel base. Start adding some of my things in to make the truck look like a truck. Just going over the fender part with the black marker just to accent them a little bit more. And then my little lines, I put little lines on the bumpers too, of the door. On the other side, I think I did one, I did this right here and it doesn't work. I don't know why I did it, but I put a cross line there. So don't do that if you do this. <laughs> Tried to scrape it off, it wasn't going to work, but it's fine. I stuck it. So then I added buttons. Now, I had two the same size buttons for the front wheels and a larger button in the back because often trucks will have larger wheels in the back. And then little blue like rims, these little blue buttons that I used as rims on there. I was trying to paint over that line. It wasn't going to work. So I gave up. Like, all right, one side's going to have that line. The other side isn't. Cleaning up my glue as I glue down those wheels. And there's the little blue hubcaps. So cute. And then I added on rear view mirrors and I just used blue buttons. Couldn't find two the same size, so the driver's side was a little bit larger. It's okay, it still works. Looks really cute. And then I'm going to Mod Podge on the Toy Story sign. And then that just pops it. The truck looks amazing now. And then on both sides. Took a little bit of work because I'm dealing with plastic here. There's plastic uh, packaging. So I had to hold it down a little bit, go back and tack down some parts of the Toy Story. But the best part was adding in all the characters. So Woody, of course, has to be driving the truck. And so I get Woody in there, sort of glued him in there. I had to bend him a little bit, but I got him in there. Fine. And then just started adding all the characters and trying to decide, like, where would they be? You know, they're seeing another part of that logo. Oh, and this is the spare tire. <laughs> There's another button. And then I started gluing. There's the horse, and Buzz is hanging off the back. You'll see why in a minute. And we've got Little Bo Peep hanging on for dear life off the, off the truck. I did glue all these characters down. I just thought it would be better. I was trying to decide to put, where to put RC. Um, I've got Jessie hanging off the other side of this. And I just, I did glue her hat on, so it didn't come off. And... I'm just playing with where they go. The squirrel I ended up putting her in the back and the, the top of the truck almost. It was fun to try and glue these on. <laughs> and then I have this little, I couldn't get him out. I got him in there. I couldn't get him out. But he needs to have a riser. So I got a little block of wood. I just furniture marked it, glued him on there so I could put him in the bed of the truck and he would still be up a little bit. And now I've got the little little ducky. I put him in the front seat next to to Woody. And then the RC racer. Oh, I put the blue bunny on top. 
the RC eraser, I took this piece of wire, I twined it around um, a pencil, tied it around RC, and then Woody is pulling him, trying to save him. Do you remember in the movie where they're trying to save him? So cute. I hope you guys like it. Catherine's lifeguard truck. So she's showing us the things that she put on this tear tree, which is so adorable. But she was at the beach a week or so ago recouping from three weeks with, of grandkids and decided to do a lifeguard truck to represent 15 years of life at Mother's Beach in Long Beach. They went every Saturday and Sunday, and she loves the beach. And this is so cute. Thank you so much, Catherine. This came out absolutely adorable. And I'm sure your family would be proud of your little remembrance of your childhood memory. And hopefully you recouped from those grandkids. But thank you so much for doing the challenge. This is adorable. Love it. This is Deborah's truck. So her son is getting married in the fall. So of course she did a wedding one. How adorable is this? I actually thought about doing a wedding one. Glad I didn't at this point. <laughs> we would have had to. But this came out so cute. I love your choice of colors. And she left. She used leftover stuff from the last challenge for the jewels on top of her truck. Good job, Deborah. Absolutely adorable. Thank you so much for being part of the challenge. So now we have Wanda's. Wanda, love your little beach theme. She even gave us some background scenery here to show it off. I love the sloth is driving this little beach truck. So cute. She used all kinds of stickers, really inventive, absolutely love it. Thank you so much for being part of the challenge, Wanda. And hey, I like your little hey on the truck there. And the surfboards in the back, just too cute, great job. All right, so Catherine couldn't find a truck. You guys, look, she made her own. She used one of those crates and some popsicle sticks, so inventive, absolutely love it. And then she just did all kinds of things to make this look like a truck. It's so adorable. It really looks like a big Jeep Humvee thing. And then she put a dinosaur in there. This is truly Jurassic. She says she's going to change it for each season, which I think is such an incredibly good idea. Great job, Catherine. Absolutely love it. Thank you so much for sharing. Now we have a Sharon who did us a really beautiful fall truck driven by a pumpkin who is off to sell his wares. So it says three, two, one, woo! That's what the license plate sells, off to sell his wares. So cute, really love it. You could also probably change this thing, make it Christmas, Sharon. Great job. Thank you so much for being part of this. Mary did a truck in memory of her dad. He always drew, drove a blue truck and he would uh, do junk shopping and this is so cute she used barbie furniture in the back i think you did your dad proud mary super cute super creative absolutely love it barbie furniture who would have thunk pat gave us a farm fresh pumpkins truck heading off to sell their pumpkins they grew i would guess so cute Great use of all the pumpkins and blue, and I love your little details on the truck, like the little mirrors and stuff. Super good job. Thank you so much for sharing this with us, Pat, and being part of this challenge. You guys all did such an amazing job. I love to see all this, this hard work. Thank you. Okay, this one is by Lori, and she's paying homage to her brother who had a green truck and with a touch of fall on here. But you guys, look, she did a road and she did a tree. It's like so cute. And she did popsicle sticks on the top for the roof. Look at that. Look at the yellow lines for the road even. So very cute. Thank you so much, Lori, for being part of the challenge. You guys all did such an amazing job. I just love seeing all these, but I, great job, Lori. Thank you very much. This is my Mickey shirt that matches my guys. And so I'm going to redo this one. And this is going to be super simple. I'm going to first fold the t-shirt in half. And I'm going to find the very center of the neckline. And all I'm going to do is open up this collar. 
All right, so I've found what appears to be the center. I'm gonna take my scissors, and for this, I'm gonna go down one whole scissor length. So can you guys see that? I'm just gonna go down one whole scissor length, like, just like that. Now I've opened this up. And so now I wanna really just make this stay open. I'm gonna cut just a little bit further down there because I can wear a tank top underneath it. Not too much further down. So this would just be personal choice on how far down you cut that. All right, now I want this to like open up and be gone. So I wanna make it sort of like it's collared. So the way I'm gonna do that is I need a piece of chalk. So I'm gonna take a piece of chalk and what I'm gonna do is cut a slit here to pull this through. Come up a little bit more. And then I really want to match that over here. I could go get a ruler, but I don't think it's that imperative. I think that's as far over. This is why we use chalk. Because <laughs> we can do that. Hmm. Appears to be the same distance. So we're just going to go for it. All right. Now all I'm going to do is cut this. So I'm just going to fold in half. And start with a little tiny cut. And then go that way and this way. Do the same thing over here. That way and this way. So I wanna go through and then come back up. So now I'm going to fold this in half and I'm gonna see how I made my ends meet there. And now I'm just gonna go over about a half an inch and I'm gonna just, I'm not gonna cut as long a slit. So do you see that? We have one, there's two slits, but they're different sizes. I'm gonna do the same thing over here they're about half the, the length, I guess, is probably about right. Doing the same thing, just going like half an inch. Okay, so now I have, this one might be a little, anyway, it doesn't matter. Now I'm gonna weave this through like this. So that opens up my collar. Pretty simple, right? Basically, that's it for the collar. Now I'm gonna move on to the sleeves. I'm not doing anything on the bottom of this one. I didn't on my last one either. So that's it on the collar and now I'm gonna go to the sleeves. And all I'm gonna do on the sleeves is knot them slightly. So I'm gonna find the top of the sleeve right here. I'm gonna go right along where it's sewn. So just, you know, and I'm gonna cut down. Oh, it's probably, it just depends on the size shirt and everything and how big are the sleeves. But I'm probably gonna go down about two and a half inches. I'm guessing, All right? Now I have that cut just like this. So I'm gonna go over to the other side and mimic that. So I'm cutting the same length basically. There we go. 
So now both the sleeves are cut with just one slit in them. And now I'm gonna put another slit um, on either side of this. So I'm basically I'm gonna make like a, like a belt loop here, two belt loops. So I'm gonna fold it in half again, and I'm just making sure that we're staying seamed in with the crease on top of the crease. Okay, so now all I'm gonna do is cause two belt loops. And a belt loop is just two side-by-side -side cuts. So I'm gonna go one, two. I'm gonna slightly shorter, but it's okay. And then I'm gonna come over to this side and do the same thing. I'm just visually guessing on my distance here. One, two. This seems a little short. All right, see that? I have two, I call these belt loops, right? I've cut two slits to create a loop. Now I'm gonna come over to this side and do the same thing so that it, it mirrors it, so that it's basically the same. I'm just gonna lay this, I'm gonna sort of show where the cuts are. I'm gonna fold this part in half above where I cut it on the sleeve, right? And there's my center. I'm just going to repeat that, obviously, on the other side, just like I did over there. This is, does not have to be perfect. I say that every time. But it really doesn't have to be. There's This is just a... We're just tying up t-shirts. All right. Now, where I cut this, I'm going to take this, and I'm going to cut it in half. I'm going to loop up. One side goes up through that loop. This side is gonna go up through this loop. And I'm going to tie them, making a knot. See that? And now that's our sleeve. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Cut it in the center. I'm gonna loop up. Loop up, and I'm gonna knot it. And there's our two sleeves. Don't they look cute? So now we'll put it on. There's a part of me that really wants to knot this. So I'm gonna see after I put it on if it holds. If it doesn't hold, I'm gonna slice here and knot. I think it is though, once I have it on. Okay, so let's see how this looks on. Sleeves look great. I need to do a little more work on this. So first I'm gonna take this down just a little bit more. And then I'm going to Weave this again, like I've been doing, and I'm going to knot it. So I'm gonna cut, this is already unraveling right here because we've cut into the threads. So all I'm gonna do is knot it on our loop. So you can see that I'm what I've done, look, is separate the collar from the shirt because it's a natural, it's gonna give me two pieces to knot. 
So I could go in and not like this. Or I can weave them both through. And I can do a knot with these two. Remember pulling on, it always gives you a little more. So I'm gonna knot those two together. It takes a little bit of work, you guys. This isn't, you know, you gotta do a little bit of pulling on it. We want that knot so it'll stay knotted. A little hard there, but I got it. I got it through. Okay. Okay. So now I'm worried that the knot won't stay on the other side of the belt loop. So now I'm going to take my belt loop and go over and under. And that's sort of gonna knot it. Look, see, we've kind of given it a, I don't even know what we would call that. <laughs> but now it's looped into itself, so it can't come out of there. Okay, so let's do it again on this side. I separated these two. Where's my seam ripper when I need it? Okay, so I'm going through the loop here, right? And I'm going to knot these two together, which is going to be a little difficult because they're dealing with a lot of material here. Mm -hmm. Knot, and we're gonna double knot that so it'll stay together, right? Okay, so we've gotten that double knotted. So it's, let me just show you. I've double knotted it, then it in the belt loop, but we're gonna put the belt loop around the knot one more time so it doesn't slip out. So here's the belt loop, and we're just putting the knot through it. Now, it's gonna stay here on the side of the collar. See that? Now, these little extra pieces might bug me a little bit, so I'm just gonna sort of tuck them in as best I can. I don't really wanna cut them because I feel like if I cut them, I, that knot might come undone. So I'm just gonna cut, tuck them, or maybe not. Maybe we just leave them. So now what we've done too, though, is that our elements on the shirt, we have knots, right? It's all knots, knots on our sleeves and knots on the collar. And this has given me a nice V-neck on this collar. Now I'm going to go put it on and see what it looks like. Hope you guys like it.